Well, welcome to this video. Devonport is a port where the spirit of Tasmania um, comes in and we use it as a base for about a week to visit all the tourist attractions around there and after coming you've got to offload so much gear because of biosecurity so it gave us a good chance to stock up. So watch our earlier video. I did one on the crossing of the spirit that you should get some good tips out of. So enjoy this one. This is Devonport Mersey Bluff Lighthouse. This is where the spirit comes in and that's another commercial car freight ferry going across. They go back and forth like the spirit that they just carry commercial trucks. Mersey Bluff Lighthouse. Here's one of the locals. What's oh, a tour guide? How you going mate? She should get around. I think you're stalking me. Grave or something. A remembrance thing. Luke. And just over there, that's the entrance to Devonport. That's where the spirit of Tasmania comes in. So the cliffs here at Donhead are all tertiary basalt. That's what all this black rock is and it's been eroded away, but stunning structures out there. Let's pan around. Just a beautiful rugged coastline. And a lovely little tour guide. <laughs> so here at Donhead there's quite a few walks you can do. And people are saying over the hill here. It's a penguin viewing area as well. But like all the Tassie, there's just, they encourage walking everywhere. Beautiful tracks. The national parks are very big in Tasmania. It's a very pretty little walk. People just say it's it's called the Elm Forest or the Elm Walk. So I presume all these trees are elm trees. They certainly look very English looking. Around the lake, it's lovely. The lovely Don River, Don River Heads. I'll tell you what, the water is pristine, crystal clear. So this is Lily Cove Beach Conservation Area, which is just only a little bit west of um, Devonport. And this is a really good viewing platform for penguins, but they may only come out at night, but we'll go down and have a look anyway. Little penguins, they'd be little fairy penguins. So again though, just look at the beautiful coastline. Oh hello to her. Hello. Hello. There you go. See the penguin. We're looking for penguins, but they'll be out there somewhere at the moment. A beautiful spot for them to see them waddling up. All down here, all the beaches are covered in these beautifully round rocks. Fantastic. Just beautiful. So this is all Lily Cove Beach. Oh god, I love all this wood timber. So this is where all the penguins come out at night. So all the penguins, they all nest down there and come up here in all of this with the nest with their little chicks. But isn't this just beautiful, like it's just unspoiled nature. This is Truffle Door, which is a truffle farm, never been to one before. So we'll go and have a look. It's just at Lower Barrington, just near Devonport. Truffle Door, little electric mini. Hello. Thank you. Truffle products. So you can do a tasting here for just five dollars. That's pretty reasonable. Truffle Ducker. So they grow them here and they harvest them in August. So they're fresh then. It's really interesting. So we're going to have the truffle tasting, which is five dollars. But their menu here is really interesting because it gives you the experience of just trying truffles in all different foods. So truffle creme brulee. Oh, that sounds alright. So this is 
pure like truffle oil. It's um, extra virgin olive oil with truffle in it. And it's just served with some um, walnuts. So the truffles actually grow under the walnut trees, the ladies are explaining to us. It's really interesting. It's really beautiful. We've just had the tasting plate. Um, but they also, what's interesting, they do some beautiful homemade jams. So they haven't got truffle in them, but just magnificent jams. So a beautiful day drive or a day trip just south of Devonport is going down to Sheffield and Devil's Gate Dam and also that truffle door we just showed you. And you go through some of the most spectacular, beautiful, rich valleys that Tasmania is so famous for. But all in all, just a, a lovely drive and that's Mount Roland in the distance. And I think Mount Roland must be the very top end of all the Crown, Cradle Mountain National Park. But just spectacular. So Devil's Gate Dam. Barrington. Beautiful. So just a short drive away is the little town of Sheffield and uh, Sheffield is well known for quality butter fat and it's also um, a prime dairy farming region. But what is really quaint about Sheffield is the locals have all taken to this street art and street art is absolutely everywhere. This is a park just near the information centre. It's like a walking art gallery and um, it's really amazing to see. But it's, it's not only just here, it's all over the whole town. I've never seen so much street art in my life. Just brilliant. So we're in Sheffield. We're about to have a scallop pie. And that's Mount Roland. This whole town, there's just murals everywhere, wherever you look, like across the road there, but they're everywhere throughout the whole town. You all over there. Uh, about to have our first Tazzy scallop pie. Here we go. So we're just going to the Bass Strait Maritime Centre. This is a little cafe just around the corner. Maritime time centre is just over there. But, love this old mast. It's beautiful. It's all in a great position. Right here on the waterfront. And it's sitting right on the point where the spirit of Tasmania comes in. So, let's go and have a look. So we're just told each, each room is themed. And there's also a simulator where you can actually bring a ship into port, so there's all different levels, so I'll, I'll definitely have a go at that right up my alley. Really well reviewed on um, TripAdvisor. So that's the old port there, and that's where the spirit still comes in to this day. So narrow, that's what really surprised me. So the river was originally, there's all coal mining done along here, and the first crops grain, which is, we found this quite a few places already in Tasmania, were potatoes. This room's all about the shipbuilding that was huge in Tasmania. They had the um, beautiful hue and pine. It's well known for boat building down here. Look at that. A few barnacles. So really interesting when you read the early transport. This company down here, Finlayson's, were actually the first company to invent a production line. And of course, apples. So there were two main businesses all around here, but Apple giving it the name of the Apple Isle. Same here, the war, World War II was actually a boost to this area. Primary produce, well it still produces some of the best primary produce around. And good old Oval team. And limestone from all around here, it's used in steel production. Here are all the gastropods of Tasmania, including the old super famous abalones. And this part with the ship's belly in is actually part of the original Harbour Master's house. And this beautiful bass straight, just straight out there. So this is a model of the original princess of Tasmania. All with vehicles and caravans in it. 
And the other side over there is the Empress of Australia. And I remember the Empress of Australia before Spirit of Australia. Shows how young I am. Sorry, Spirit of Tasmania. And now, that's the first Spirit of Tasmania. There she is there in port. There's the Empress of Australia. I'm pretty sure the Empress of Australia was the one that ran from Sydney. Now, of course they stopped that and now it's a spirit of Tasmania. We just noticed on the board over there there's actually three spirits of Tasmania. It's one, two and three. And this room is the Navy room. It's fascinating. This is so well done. It's such a real collection of history. That's really interesting. That's the bell pattern for ringing the bells so you can tell different times of day. Get a bit to remember. Here's the bells down here. Very important part of any ship. I found this all really interesting too. All the different things you could do with rope. But that one there, I used to know that's a monkey's fist, and they use that to um, throw rope from one boat to the other. So you'll see them in big ships even today come into port, they throw a thinner line, then they pull the main mooring line down. That's always like a monkey's fist they use for that. This is the early navigation equipment. Good old ship's telescope. And a mighty compass. All your tools for your chart work. And a good old inclinator over the back. I think you'd use that a lot in Bass Strait. It's an original old sextant. This magnificent wooden box. It's vital for navigation. Turn it to the left. Lovely old brass binoculars and a monocular as well. And a telescope. Of course, today you've got all the reapers and things. Look at the original old radios. Oh God, they've come a long way now. now. This is really interesting. This is why Bass Strait gets so rough because Bass Strait itself is only about 80 metres deep and you've got the edge of the continental shelf so you've got like kilometers deep out here so the water comes up in a hurry and just rushes across here then spills over here into what they call Bass Canyon but it probably also explains a lot of the weather because this even though it's water will really affect the air up above it the west coast of Tasmania gets a lot more rain but it's really interesting how close the continental shelf is to Tasmania so Bass Strait Canyon which is just here, which is where all this water flows over. It's 400 metres high and about 100 kilometres long. So this is why they said if it was a waterfall on land, it would be the highest waterfall in the world by miles. And this is a model of a cooter boat. I was telling Viv only yesterday, cooter boats um, were the original fishing boats that they used all throughout this era from about 1870 through to about 1950. So we're about to get on board the SS one of your own, I'm going to bring her into port for you. Give it a whirl. Here we go, we're going to bring the ship into uh, Devonport. So I'll hand the camera over to the first mate.
So we hope you've enjoyed this video on Devonport and the tourist attractions around the area. Um, please remember to subscribe below and if you'd like to follow our travels, follow us on Instagram at Caravanning Life and also on Facebook, Caravan Life. So have a good day, stay safe.